Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Explorer Diving's YouTube channel. On today's dive, we'll be diving the Tet Center. It's a wonderful shore dive. Let's go dive. Tech Center for Creativity and Learning, also known as JK Tech Center or simply the Tech Center. The dive site known as the Tech Center has changed names over the years and site does have a long history dating back to the 1840s. Above ground, the Tech Center site first had its beginnings with beer. The site was once part of Molson's Brewery until around 1850 in which the Morton Brewery and Distillery Company was set up and began operating at the Curtin location. Over the next couple of decades the site changed hands frequently and was used for various endeavours. There were several limestone buildings for production and storage. Towards the end of its time as a brewery and distillery, one night a night watchman, Cornelius Driscoll, was murdered and is said to still haunt the area as he continues his watch. With Canada sending thousands of men to Europe during World War I, hospitals became a premium. The site was taken over by the federal government and converted into an army hospital. After the 1918 conversion to an army hospital, the military again made a major change in 1924. The building was repurposed as the Eastern Ontario Army Headquarters. It was used as the headquarters until 1966 when the army headquarters were moved to Ottawa. For a short period it was run by Corrections Canada but was eventually sold to the city in 1971. For a while it was known as the Domino Theatre for Performing Arts. Presently it houses parts of Queen's University and other buildings which is an arts meeting location. With so much change on the surface there is sure to be interesting stories underwater. Originally the water level was lower but with the completion of the St Lawrence Seaway the water level was raised significantly in the area. The first thing that most divers go to at this site is a massive dock that is now below the surface. The dock was first used by the Molson Brewery and the Morton Brewery Companies. In the first half of the 1800s the primary mode of transportation was by sail. This dock was a general duty dock that was used for bringing supplies to the distillery and for shipping bottles to market, beyond Kingston markets. It formed a large L-shaped structure to give ships a little protection while they were docked from the weather coming off the open lake. This was also the beginning of steam powered ships on the Great Lakes. Even though the dock was not used as much in the later half of the 1800s and early 1900s, the structure survived for some years. As Morton started get into shipping through railways, the dock was not used often and eventually fell into disrepair. Also 20 feet out you can see the old shoreline what was reinforced with stone and wood. 
it is a great place to dive and find old military canteens, bayonets and some coins in the area. When the Eastern Ontario Army Headquarters was here, it made a convenient loading point for getting rid of old supplies. The military did hire a boat to drop objects out in the lake for disposal, however, not everything made it into the boats. Entry is typically done where the land drops off to the small stone beach in between two thickets. The rocks are small and slippery, so caution does need to be observed. Swimming parallel to the shore towards the limestone buildings, you will find a large L-shaped dock. The deepest part of the dock is about 30 feet to the bottom. The inside of the pier is about 10 feet shallower than the outside. With the structure and the difference in depth, it makes an interesting spot to see different fish during the day or even at night. With the passage of time, holes in the wooden stone docks are appearing and make for an interesting swim through the holes. Caution should be advised as the top of the pier is 10 feet or less to the surface in some spots. It is not uncommon for boats not to notice this and try to make a sudden course correction. On the inside of the dock you will find a treasure trove of old garbage thrown away from years gone by. When looking around be careful as there is lots of glass out of sight. To the northeast of the dock you will find a small cove surrounded by houses. In this cove you will find the remains of the HMS St Lawrence. At the time of its launch, the HMS St. Lawrence was a marvel. The large ship, when launched in 1814, was a 112 gun, first rate ship of the Royal Navy. It was the only Royal Navy ship of the line to be launched and served completely in fresh water. With the completion of the ship at the Royal Dockyard in Kingston, it effectively finished the naval war of the War of 1812 on the lower Great Lakes. It scared the American ships enough that they stayed the remainder of the war in their ports, as no American ships on the Great Lakes could match its firepower. The HMS St. Lawrence never did see naval action, but was used as a transport ship for the remainder of the war. The gun deck of the ship was 192 feet and 2 inches long, and had a crew of 700 men. It was a flagship of the British Navy when it entered service on the Great Lakes. It was sold to Morton Distilleries and used as a dock, mostly for coal and wood. The ship now lies in 10 feet of water and sadly is now mostly just the ribs that remain of this giant ship. The Americans were building two larger ships but a preemptive strike by the British delayed completion of the ships. By the end of the war, the British had two larger ships nearing completion at the Royal Dockyard but were abandoned as they were no longer needed. In 1832, the HMS St. Lawrence was the only Royal British ship which was designated as surplus to be sold. It can take a few minutes to reach the site. Caution should be observed though guys, it is a shallow dive. In the summer there is lots of lakeweed growing around the ribs. The best time to see the remains of the ship is in the early spring when lakeweed and algae are at their lowest. And again guys, boys and girls, thanks for watching the video. If you really are enjoying it, please help us out. Hit the subscribe button and the notification button. And guys, next week's shore dive will be at the Upper Brewers Mills. Check us out. You'll enjoy that one as well. See you next time, guys. Well, guys, thanks again for watching the videos. If you're really enjoying the videos, please hit the like button and subscribe button. And don't forget, if you have any comments or if you want to know anything about any diving, leave comments down below and somebody will get back in touch with you. Have a good dive, guys.